Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids, and today we're playing some more Dragonair. We've got a sponsored video here again. I've been playing this game now for two weeks since the first one, and I've been having a ton of fun. And I'm going to be showing you uh, basically the most important champions that I've got so far and how that has like shaped my game. It's going to be pretty fun. A couple of things to cover before we dive in. You can find the link in the description and probably a pinned comment down below where you can actually go and download the game uh, for yourself. It's available lots of different places. The Epic Game Store, it's on Steam, on PC, uh, Mac, iOS, Android for mobile devices as well. So lots of different places where you can play it. I'm currently playing it. On my PC, I'm a PC client, as you can see, which is just fine and dandy and lovely. And of course, one of the coolest things, super important to me, I'm editing this in. I actually forgot to mention it the first time, but it's completely cross-platform. It means you can be playing on your PC, then go, oh, cool, well, I want to go for a walk. Then turn off your PC, hop onto your phone, and play on your phone, right? Cross-platform, hop between all these different places to play. Awesome. Now, the launch of the game seems to be going really well so far, actually. It's been over 5 million downloads in the less than a month since the global launch. It's been number one in the leaderboards for 13 different regions. So, uh, yeah, the game is doing well, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I saw this is very cool over on their official Facebook, right? Uh, this is from a few days ago now, but I think there's going to be a few of these different teasers coming out for a Dragonair with Dungeons and Dragons, a crossover event, which is super cool. So this is a teaser of Drist, uh, who's coming into it, which is, I, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, very, very cool. I will be honest, I missed most of the games and stories and stuff with Drist in it. But uh, I'm well aware that this guy's a total badass. Was he in like Baldur's Gate 1 or 2? Am I thinking of that? Maybe the right person. Maybe I'm getting messed up, uh, mixed up. I'm not super sure. But hey, look, there you go. Hello there, this is uh, Nubkex from the future, editing in once again to make an extra point uh, that I totally forgot about, but it is actually really cool to see this D&D promotion with, uh, with Dragonair because Dragonair being an open world game with this Western fantasy theme that incorporates a ton of tabletop RPG mechanics such as, well, dice rolling, for example. Super cool to see those things which are really popular in D&D uh, and are also showing up in Dragonair come together with this D&D &D official promotion and crossover. Super, super cool. One of the really cool things in this game, let me show you it actually right here, because I've actually done some of it, right? Uh, is the banner system. So every few days, you can see, for example, right now we've got Celestial Alternate Summons 3 up for five more days at time of recording. Um, and you can see this over here. If we come to the events tab, right? Oh, I'm in the way you can click this upcoming events button and it will actually show you like upcoming things, right? So for example, the D&D &D crossover, it's coming on the 17th. There's going to be Celestial Alternate Summons 4, Imperial Shadows Recast after that, right? There's a whole bunch of different events coming up, which is awesome. Well, one type is the summon event. So over here, here we go. The way this works is really cool, right? These are the legendary champions that are available in this summon pool. These are the epics in the summon pool. And these are your chances. Now, the 35th summon guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be a legendary. 7th guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be an epic. You can pick one of these legendaries to be your blessed summon, which is what I've done. I've picked this guy over here. Let's check him out. I decided to, I've got a lot of fire heroes and poison heroes. So I thought that Jorn would be a really good pick. He's coming in. Uh, let me move me again. Got Seeker of Truth, it takes less fire damage. When he takes fire damage, he can get ultimate energy. Sick. Um, and he can also boost allies, give them defense up as well. He can spray flames. This is super cool. A flamethrower move. He can spray, uh, spray frames. But spray flames doing fire damage with attack penalty too. So he can do fire damage to himself. That's okay, because he takes reduced. And then he's got Unique Bomb, this fire damage to enemies in range, reducing their ultimate energy and dispelling all of their buffs. This is so sick. This would be amazing, like actual game changing for my arena team. I would love this so much. Um, just completely mess up the enemy strategy. So I thought he'd be really strong. And I, like I said, I've got a lot of fire heroes. Um, there's a, like this guy's a fire hero as well. He'd be a good choice. Casper, the maniac white face. He looks super sick. Gains absurd charade upon an ally's wild check. So wild is like a fire hero specific thing. Uh, very cool. They can do extra damage with their wilds, right? He's throwing damage, doing cool stuff. Um, I thought another one, you guys might recognize her. 
from the intro experience has actually been Yara, the Thorn. She's the support for the Frost faction. She's got an accuracy aura by 15 all battles. Very useful. Uh, when inflicted with control, she's immune to it and can freeze the caster. Again, that's so strong, especially for Arena. Gives shield and defense up two to the uh, hero and the ally with the lowest current HP on a short cooldown. Very big defensive move. Then Frozen Spike does cold damage to an enemy, dispels all their buffs, reduce their ultimate energy by 100%. 100 just completely reset that thing with a 100% chance of doing Frozen for five seconds and attack penalty two for 10. Um, again, obviously insanely good in Arena. A lot of the bosses, I think, are going to be not susceptible to Frozen, but fully pushing back their ultimate energy and doing attack penalty too is a game changer so she's insanely good but you get to pick one slap them in there and your chance to get them is just going to keep stacking up let me see it's down here i think uh yeah after summoning a non-blessed legendary hero the chance to obtain a blessed one increases to two times four times ten then even 20 times the initial rate uh making it just exceptionally likely you're going to get them this is a great system because it lets you target a particular champ that you want you come in and you you pick your favorite from all of these you go that is my favorite that's the one i want to target and then the more that you summon the better a chance you have of getting them it's yeah it, it's cool it just scales up uh, and it means yeah it means you can target them which is super cool so there you go and which ones have been the best for me i do have a couple of legendaries uh, i haven't actually bought anything this is just i've honestly been pretty lucky to be honest with you we'll come back to those in a second uh, I think the first champion to talk about, obviously, is the Traveler. This is your character that you create yourself. The reason that they are so good is that you can freely switch them between these different elements, ice, fire, and lightning. And the reason that that is so important, I got actually put on a bit of gear back again. It falls off when you switch because you've got like uh, uh, element exclusive stuff, is that when you are doing areas like, for example, if I come over, Okay, over here, if I want to do the flame domain, which you need to do to get the materials to upgrade the ranks of your fire heroes. I mean, if I just jump in and I show you, um, I'm probably blocking this. So yeah, I am. If I move over here, right? Fire and poison damage taken uh, is reduced by 60% and damage dealt to fire and poison heroes increased by 60%. If I go up, I think that increases. Yeah, it goes up to like 90%. <laughs> So in other words, like your fire and poison heroes are going to do 90% less damage and take 90% more. Basically, don't use them for the fire domain. So it kind of means you need at least a couple of different teams, right? If I want to upgrade, I've got lots of good fire heroes and poison heroes. I can't really bring them in here, but I need to do it. So you have to build up multiple teams. Well, that's where the traveler is great. I can go, okay, he's a fire. I'm using him as fire mostly. I can switch him over to ice. Now he's in an ice team and that will really help me going into that. Also in PvP, it levels up your champions to be equal to the level of your Traveler, which is massive in the arena. Really lets you experiment very much so with your champ. So I, I love that. That's super cool. But Traveler is amazing. He's basically a damage dealer, right? He's, he's doing AoE damage. He's got single target damage. Uh, when he is in lightning mode, you've got more crowd control, like he can stun enemies. Frost mode, you actually bring a shield for your team. So there's a sort of a variety there and you can switch it up on the fly as much as you want there's no limitation so he's super valuable uh One this rare is absolutely brilliant this is probably my favorite rare champion in the game Sigrid. she is so so good basically what she does her passive gains 25 percent ultimate energy whenever an enemy with a debuff dies and then her ultimate is a big poison damage hit hits really hard to an enemy uh, but it hits every enemy inflicted with debuffs as well. So if you've got a team that's putting loads of debuffs out there, every single time an enemy dies, it starts supercharging her ultimate, getting it out faster and faster. And this just smacks so much AoE damage. Like my Traveler, he does 660% uh, attack damage with his AoE, right? She's doing 820%. It's way more. Uh, the downside is, well, it's only a single target if no one's inflicted with debuffs. But, right, you set it up right, and she just scales so insanely well. It's so, so powerful. She also brings healing prohibition and attack penalty two for 10 seconds, which is just gloriously good. So I made sure to put all my rare tomes I got from the campaign into her. Absolutely. Sigrid is insane. Uh, another really great champ. I don't have any tomes in her right now. Is uh, Arena, I think her name is. Yeah, Arena. 
Um, she's very annoying. She's got a very annoying voice line, <laughs> but she makes up for it by being just fantastic. So the big thing about her, she has a chain lightning that bounces between enemies. Brilliant for AoE. And then she's got an AoE ultimate as well that puts attack penalty to and can even dispel a buff. So she's brilliant for coming in and clearing out the goblins layer, which is what you're going to do to be leveling up your champions. Also massive fan, massive of Hexandra. She is like the second rare you get uh, just from playing the campaign. You get her within, I don't know, half an hour of starting the game. And she's just an amazing healer, right? Good heal on her, uh, her battle skill. Then her ultimate is a massive AoE heal. She is just useful everywhere. Arena, campaign, all the adventure stuff. So good. Um, so there are some of my favorites. Usha is another one that a lot of... I've seen a lot of people talking about her as being absolutely amazing. She is very good. She is more, though, when you've got um, a team with Frost, right? Every second basic attack does double damage to enemies under Frost. Um, she has a really powerful two hits for 800% attack total, but it does double damage against enemies inflicted with Frost. So this can potentially do just insane damage. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any other heroes at the moment that are very good at applying Frost, so I've not been using her too much, but man, she's really, really solid. Um, I got Gardas. He was cool. He was the first epic I pulled. He's quite fun for the tower defense type games. So he's got this big hit that knocks enemies back, knocks them up, stuns them. Very good sort of crowd control champion and range damage. Uh, and then Horus, you get login champion for three days. So everyone gets Horus and he's just a super tank, right? Super tanky, taunts enemies. He gets damage reduction, hit recovery. He can put out attack penalty too as well. Brilliant, brilliant tank. So these are a few. I've got some fun ones as well. Check this out. Sifris. I think th this champ looks super sick. I've just pulled her recently. I'm leveling her up right now. I'm using her in Arena. But she actually has a Resurrect, which is so cool. And then I literally just got Eric or Erich. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. From the campaign. Again, a legendary everyone can get here in Season 1. Uh, he's a damage dealer with wild, so he basically has a chance whenever he casts a skill to do more damage, which is really sick. And with his passive, um, he can keep stacking it up to get more, a uh, better chance of doing it and doing extra fire damage whenever he does wild. So I think he's going to be really strong with a wild type team. There are a few of the champions. Let me show you my legendaries, my boys. This is my favorite champ in the game so far, Chrysos, the Scorching Shaman or Shaman. He is so cool. So whenever his shield goes away, he's got a heal from that shield. Uh, this move is decent, right? He's going to actually do three attacks, which are going to dispel enemies within range of one buff. Pretty nice. And give a shield to the ally at the lowest HP. But his ultimate, mwah, it is so, so good. Full AoE. Hits everybody. Does big damage. Removes all their shields. Gives attack penalty too. And gives a massive shield to my whole team. He's amazing. I'll show you him in action in a second. And then Lucian, he's really sick as well cool ice dude on a horse uh, he's coming in he can freeze uh, the enemy with the highest ultimate energy which is great he charges to them uh, and then he can also do an aoe attack that can put recharging speed penalty sick right super sick let's let's do let's do a little fight here let's go over to the arena which is over here we can fast travel over let's do a pvp fight and then we'll do see some aoe damage as well but let's go into the grand gladiator arena i'm, I'm slow using my tickets today uh Let's go in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this guy's level 92. He's got a bit ahead of me. A bit ahead of me. Um, we go for this guy. Let's reroll. Let's see if we can get an easier fight. This guy's a pain in the butt. We'll see if we can take him out. I'm trying to avoid this dude. This epic. He's a nightmare, man. This is my my mortal enemy right now. So what's he do? Whenever he takes damage, he can gain defense up permanently up to 20 stacks. He becomes so tanky. And then he can also give hit recovery. And he can dispel and heal his allies by defense, right? So he stacks up his defense super high. Then he's healing everybody. It's disgusting. I hate this guy. He's my mortal enemy. But let's go in. What we've got in here, we've got Sifris. We've got her coming in with a revive. As you can see, uh, for PvP, everyone is put up to level 90, like my Traveler, which is super cool. We've got a Traveler coming in for damage. Um, we've got Lucian. He's coming in to hopefully lock them down and charge around. Then we've got Charge Buddies, right? This guy charges to the enemy with the lowest HP. So basically, uh, Karaman, he's pretty sick. He's like this sort of knight without a head. It's just like flame where his head is. Super cool. He's going to be diving in 
uh, and hopefully doing big damage, ignoring defense to uh, the enemies. Don't have the best gear for him, sadly. And then uh, Chrysos is going to be tanking, giving us those shields, helping us survive. So let's go in. Let's do this. Uh, unequipped gear. Oh, that's not right. Hang on. I've messed something up. Ah, he's missing. One sick thing you can do is uh, sync your equipment. Bam, cool. And it just, it syncs it to what you've got in campaign. You can gear champions separately in campaign and PvP, which is so cool. But let's go in. A one sick combo I forgot to mention, the passive of Lucian. He makes us immune to crowd control while we have a shield. Here we go, Chrysos, boom, look at that move. Oh my God, I think he killed two of them. That's so sick. Everyone's got a big shield. With Lucian, we're immune to crowd control while we have that shield. I just love it. Caraman takes him out in the back. This guy, I hate him so much, man. That massive heal, disgusting. Uh, but we've mostly killed him. It's just they've got a healer in the background. And this guy, let's see what we can do. Boom, big hit from Chrysos, big shield. Absolutely insane. This is great. That recharge speed penalty is going to make his ultimate charge up slower. That's his heal. So that's really, really useful for us. Good job. Caraman assassinates him in the back. The Traveler's just pumping out constant AoE damage. And like, we, we end this thing with like full HP, right? It's kind of disgusting. It's so good. So there we go. Took him out. No problem, right? Uh, you can see like the damage breakdown. Man, this is why Christos, he's my favorite. He's my fa He's number one tank and everything. He's giving us tons of healing. Uh, he's doing crazy damage. This guy is insane. He's so good. I absolutely oh, MVP, my favorite champ. Uh, the one last thing I do want to show you. Let's let's do a quick little run of goblins there. I'll show you that that team right there, and why uh, the easiest way to get there is from from our challenge book here. We'll go to goblins there too. I've not quite beaten all of goblins there too yet, but we're getting there. Um, but let me show you, you need like damage, right, for this. So going into Goblin's Lair, we just need damage, 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 right? It's all these waves of goblins. They're quite squishy. So we're just bringing in all the damage, right? And this is where we're going to see Sigrid, my favorite rare, really pop off. Just got watch how many goes of her ultimate she's going to get. It's going to be juicy. Really, really good. So we're going in. So there you go. It's her first ultimate. Now he's going to put debuffs on everybody. You're going to see her ultimate just start to, to pop off. Look at that. She, her ultimate is like full again. She's in again. We haven't seen her do an AoE yet, but hopefully we'll get that to line up soon. It all sorts of varies, depending on how things go. Go. If they survive, she should pop off. Here she goes. Bam. Takes out a bunch of them with the AoE. It's so sick. And look, her ultimate's good to go again. There she goes again. She's off again. She's like firing ults off twice for every one that everyone else fires off if not if not more she's just she's so good she's so good they might sync up here again debuffs them all she follows up beautiful beautiful it's such a cool synergy it's so cool um but yeah it <laughs> i love it our goal with this dungeon by the way is to beat it as fast as possible i'm not at this level able to beat it in 50 seconds yet for the best reward uh but i can i think i can if we're super lucky, maybe be 25. I don't think we're quite there yet in terms of consistency. Um, yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Maybe if I if I like manualed it more, we could do it. Um, but let's see. Here we go. Should have the ultimate from her. Debuffs a good few of them. Sigfrid should be ready to go. Here she goes. Gonna just wipe out this wave with all those AOEs. Beautiful. I think this might be the final wave. I don't think we're gonna get it in 25. We're close. She's close. Here she goes. Not quite enough damage. Not quite enough. I think we improved their gear some. Uh, we can get there. Uh, but yeah. Let's sing through. Still, we beat it. We got it down. Excellent victory. And we get some energy, which is lovely, lovely. Fantastic. So we're going to be using those pots to level up any of our champions, which is great. I think I'm uh, just want I want to try him out. I'm getting Erich up. So I want to try him out. We're going to get him up to 30. And then we can use the stuff that we get from um, the, the flame domain to power him up more. So let's see how far we're going to get him. Up to 41. Like you can level them up, especially through these lower levels pretty quick. And then it gets sort of harder and harder as you go up. One cool thing, as you saw, when you rank a champion up, they don't go down in levels. It just opens up like we, we got him to 30. We ranked him up and then he's free to go from 30 to 50 and then rank him up again and so on. Uh, so yeah, I think it's going to take a lot of experience to get from 90 to 100. But that's something we will definitely work on. 
Uh, and we'll be doing our Traveler first so that we can get everyone up to level 100 in Arena. Sick. Right, so there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed a look at my squad so far. Two weeks in uh, to this, which has been super fun. Really enjoying Dragonair. Again, shout out to Dragonair for sponsoring this video. Check out the link, description, and comment down below to download the game. And uh, yeah, I'll see you very, very soon. You guys have been asking, right? What are you going to do more Dragonair videos? So yes, we will. Stay tuned. We're going to have a great time. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.